Hello, welcome back to Modern East Basics. I'm PG Tie Botting, and today we're working on Abanico striking styles. So let me walk you through uh, first uh, those in the air, and we'll we'll go from there. So for Abanico corto or largo, it just depends on the distance that you're targeting. But usually, what will happen if you're going to do it as a striking style? Remember, we do it after block check counter. So if I block and check, and I immediately fan, which is what Abanico means, if I immediately fan and attack, say the hand right away inside the attack, that's going to be corto. If I, if I block check and then go far and attack maybe the head, body, um, or if I block out here and attack the hand from a far distance away, that's going to be your largo. Um, that's on the inside, okay, so I just block, fan, block check, fan, block check, fan, okay. On the other side, I'm going to block check, fan, block check, fan, block check, fan. So this action here where you go one side or the other side, if you're having a blade, you'd be hitting with the side of the tip or side of the tip, the side that we normally don't hit on, right? Normally we hit on the front of the cane, but we're going to hit on either side of that with the tip, okay? Good for going for very specific targets like eyes, pressure points, sticky bones that stick out as a process that you can attack. So, like I said, your Largo and your Corto of Abanico, a quick, quick fan is just, boom, fan towards whatever target you're doing. If it's long ways away, then that's Largo. If it's close in, that's Corto. Either way, on the inside or the outside. So I call this the inside, okay? I call this the outside. We just showed two of the quick recovery type Abanicos for Abanico Corto and Largo. For Abanico Corto, there's also a kind where you can actually close the distance in further. So part of your Abanico is the closing the distance and it changes how you're doing things. I just want to show you that option right now. We're not going to get into the details of it because a lot of it is it can involve the control with the puño and the control with the stick. It's harder to show right now. It's also a little more advanced. But abanico corto, that other way is here. Instead of pivoting back into the strike, we actually go kind of around the stick. Okay. Even if we go on this side, I go here and I go around the stick. So it's kind of like abanicoing the long way. So there's the immediate abanico, and then there's this long way. If you do that with footwork and control of your of your opponent, that gives you another option. So I'll just plant that seed here. We'll work on that on a later uh, later episode. You can also do it in combinations. So if once I do one block check and I attack here, I can also come in and attack and attack and attack and attack. So I can do several in a row and that would be several combinations. If I do it specifically to the temple and temple, some styles call that pedantic. So I block check, temple, temple, and might follow up with whatever. For the double actions, there are several different ways you can do it. Uh, the first way I learned was from Professor Remy. Uh, we block, check, I'd come over, hit the hand, or whatever target, it really depends on your distance. But then what I would do is I'd come the other way and almost slash, but really it's still an abanico, and continue on through before I rip up, okay? So it's over, under, and through, and up. A lot of times people couldn't do that, so one of the other things he did, and also he would he would change it up whatever he wanted to do for his double action. The whole idea is that there's two abanicos and a twirl. So if I go abanico and then abanico, then my twirl can go back and up. Okay, that's another common kind you'll see. You'll go top, top, twirl, up. Okay. So the four abanico double actions that I like to talk about are for this one here. Block check, over, under, and go all the way through into the rip up. The next one is over, other side over, come back and rip up. And then the high version of that, which is abanico, abanico, come back and up. And then the slashing version of that afterwards, which is here, temple, temple, slash either diagonally or temple, temple, harada. And again, you can do all of those guys on the other side. Okay, That's your quick run through. Um, we're gonna go then do it on a dummy and we'll talk about targeting and targets and also distance to manage that. All right, so we got the wooden dummy here. What I wanna show today then is some targeting and some positioning um, using the wooden dummy as a sort of a visual aid. Note that the, the arms here are gonna function as both arms and hands uh, and also the incoming stick. So, for this guy's coming with a forehand strike, I'm going to block, check, and immediately pop. So that's going to be our abanico corto, because I'm just not changing my range, it's just whatever's close to me I'm hitting. 
and you can flaw it with lots of different ways. On the other side, I'm going to block, check, hit. Okay, so block, check, hit. Now notice that you can change your target. So now we start going to changing the range. If I go block, check, hit the eye, then that's more of a long range, right? Or medio range. Block, check, hit the eye, but that count, counts as abanico largo because I am actually extending to it, okay? Really, the extended abanico is your abanico largo, and your, you know, in close, controlled is your abanico corto. Everything is a range in there. So, we've got the block, check, hit the hand, block, check, hit the hand, block, check, hit the elbow there, okay? Block, check, hit the elbow, block, check, hit the shoulder, so I'm hitting this part here to try to deaden that shoulder there, the pointy part. Block, check, shoulder, block, check, shoulder, and we work our way up, right? You get the head, the eye, block, check, eye, okay? Block, check, I might go low, right? Hit, hit those floating ribs because I want to check and finish them off, okay? So there's a lot of things you're doing. You're just doing basically a quick fan, boom, to hit a target, and you're using this side, motion here. When you power that side motion, you should be dropping a hip, okay, to power that, okay? Whether you go the inside version, you should be using your core to power that, not just pure arm. That can only go so fast. That's your quick, instant, one-shot fan. If we go to combinations, we can certainly go, I hit the hand here, and I hit the eye there, and then I might hit the other eye and finish off whatever the point is is going to be bouncing around the body because on every hit you can change the striking style so it doesn't have to be hey i'm committed to this striking style so just keep that in mind but today i'm going to break that rule we're going to talk about just using abanico so i already showed that here right several several strikes here 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 to the eye okay so the idea is you bounce and every time in between these guys you you check. So you've got this ability to bounce and adapt to anything that comes in with your abanico. So now I get to show you with targeting some of the double action. If on this side of his body I block, I check, and I do the first abanico. That's going to be the same for the first two types of abanico double action. Then for the first type, I come underneath, hit the underside of the hand, and keep on going and rip. So I can rip to the groin, okay? I can rip to under the arm, the soft points or up in the throat, right? Or if they bent over right, I get their eye. But it's one, so there's your first strike, there's your second strike, and you continue on through and get your third strike. So if I do the other kind, then I'm gonna be going over and pivot my arm so I go over again. And then this comes back and I still do the rip up, okay? So it's one, two, three. Same thing on this side, here. One, two, three, okay? Boom, 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 three. Okay. You just gotta get your body positioning right, get the distance right. Now, I'm specifically showing you the targeting of the hand, but the reality is every single one of those contacts is somewhere on your opponent. It doesn't have to be the hand, the elbow, the shoulder, the eye, the neck, whatever makes sense. If I'm in close and I've checked in close for some reason I don't wanna hit that hand for my first abanico, I might go straight to the eye. And then I might slash up under the armpit with that other abanico and then rip. Let's go back to number three then. So the third type is really just the second type done high. So the third type is going to be here, but to the head. So palantic essentially, and then backing up. Okay. So one, one, two, rip. Same thing if I go this side. One, two, rip. The fourth type then is got that dropping slash, whether it's a, a diagonal or a forward harada or single stick redonda. So if I do the, th the fourth type, I'm going to block check, temple, temple, and slash diagonally, or temple, temple, slash vertically. Both of those are for different things. So if I'm looking at you and I do this temple, temple, and I slash, I can get to the neck, the collarbone, right? The top of that shoulder as I go all the way through and maybe finish them off. For the other one, for the Harada, it's temple, temple, and I drop, and it goes straight down. It could be the crown of the head. It could be anything that they gave me. Maybe they blocked, right? So maybe they blocked or they tried to push me away. Boom, I destroy that thing that was near me. Harada is one of my favorite things for if there's an incidental contact, then you just gave me something that I'm going to destroy by dropping my weight and 
putting this Harada on there. And again, it doesn't matter. Harada is, is on the outside or the inside. Okay. All right, so Abanico double action. We just did that four different ways. Let's walk through those one more time. So the first way is over, under, and through and continue for the rip. The second way is over, pivot, over, and then come back so you can rip. Okay. The third way is high, high, and come back and rip. And then the fourth way is high, high, and downwards slash, whether it's straight down or diagonal down. That's the idea there. So you play with your targets. You've got the crown of the head. You've got temples. You've got eyes. you got tops of shoulders. You've got soft places under here. You've got elbows to play with. You've got hands to play with. You've got groins. Okay. The nice thing about abanicos is they are kind of counterintuitive as far as what you're going to attack. Or you might be busy. Hey, he can't attack me because he's way over here and he's checking. Oh yeah, boom. No problem. Oh, boom. 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 Right? Abanicos are fun because they come out of nowhere. Alright, I've got my son Connell here. We're going to show you a couple things. Or I'm going to use him to show you a couple targetings for the striking. So I'm going to have him do some forehand strike and I want to talk about a few things. And then I'll have him do a backhand strike and I want to talk about a few more things. Now that we're here, what I want to do is he's going to step in and a strike. Uh, and he's going to try to, to get me. So I want him to step in and strike. And normally he would get in and he would hit my head or whatever, right? So I want him to come in and, and hit that. So what's going to happen is I need to block that. And then I'm going to control and immediately do the abanico corto. So that's that right there. Here, bam, right there. Or I might go in and change my targets, right? Or I might go over my hand and hit the eye. Now I'm changing it more like a medio or a largo. So one more time. He comes in. I strike. I check. And I do some abanico of some sort. Okay? If I checked here, I could have checked there, and now I've got the double action. Okay? Or I could have done my other double action here, here, okay, I'm there, I come up, and strike. Okay? Um, or the high double action. Boom. I'm here, 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 because I'm backing out and destroying his hand. So pick your targets, have your fun. Notice also that your abanico is a lot of times your entry for some of your disarms. We're not gonna do disarms today, but I just wanted you to plant that seed to think about it. So he comes in and strikes, I go in here, and I immediately do this abanico, and then I do this weaving action to do the disarm, right? So that's one entry. Another simple entry for that disarm is I go here, I check, I pop that there, and now this is the Hollywood one, and I hit him with his own stick, okay? That is a couple things to think about, but the point is, Abanicos are your attacks, or sometimes your entries, because maybe I want to actually have it as an attack, right? Say if I'm, a, I'm striking at him and it misses, because he's faded out, so I don't fade out, but say, you know, I strike, he, he faded out, right? I can continue with that through, and then fade in, and do what I'm going to do. So it can be an entry, it can be a opportunity they gave you, um, it can be follow-up, it's a very fast technique. It's a very uh, counterintuitive as far as the angle that they're perceiving. So those things to think about. Now, if we switch sides, so he's going to come in on the backhand strike, and we'll do a few things here. So he comes in, boom. If I strike here, boom, and I abanico, and I come up, that's your double action, right? But a quick abanico is just this here. I can go it on the inside, right? Or I can go here, okay, and I start moving, getting closer. All of those things. Again, it also can be a setup for a disarm. If I go here and immediately come up in here and then come in and I'm like going to punch his uh, waist, when I come around my own stick, that's a disarm. And I do the strikes. Right? And I follow up with whatever I want to follow up with. So one more time, I come in, boom, boom. If he goes in here, I go boom, I pop, pop, rip. Okay? That's your Abanico double action. Pop, pop. And then rip. If you go around, you could also go here, here, rip. Okay, so there's two ways to do that backhand. I go here and immediately pop and back and then rip right away. Or I go through, boom, boom, boom. Now I've got the elbow, right? And now I'm going to stab under there and rip. So you saw what I did with my other hand. I'm connecting Abanico to other things, whether it's an attack, right? Or a follow up. Okay or setting up a disarm, or maybe you're closing the distance. Maybe we're very far away, right? And we're sparring, we're, and nobody's close the distance. I, I get that hand because he moved, right? And I go, boom, and I strike. Or if I'm going to enter, right? We're here where nobody's trying to decide, and I'm gonna go in, we're on guard, okay? And I go, wham, 
right? And I struck, okay? So it can be my entry, it can be my follow-up, it can be my disarm setup, it can be a lot of things. Again, it's a very fast, uh, disconcerting motion, and as you get a little bit counterintuitive on perceptions, because it looks like you're out of the way. Oh, I can't do anything. Oh yeah, you can't. I'm over here, I'm gonna take that left temple. Oh, pretty easy. So it's just some things to think about. Start practicing with your abanico striking styles. Use a wooden dummy. If you have a partner, use a partner. And at first, if all you want them to do is stand out here like this so you can pick some targets, that's fine. Because we're just trying to get used to the motion, used to targeting, used to distancing. And then you can start putting together. If he comes at me, however, however I want to do it, right? You just flow. So, hope you enjoyed. Catch us later. If you like this, subscribe, like, share, um, and we'll catch you next time. The next episode for the striking styles is going to be on your uh, compound striking styles, so multiple actions or multiple angles. Some of your circular things are really what we're talking about there. So uh, catch us next week. Until then, have a good week. Keep up the training. Stay safe.